I've been right there with like, you, bro. I've yeah. been right there with you, bro. Ready to risk it all. At any given time, anybody had a problem with you, I'm ready to end it all. Who you calling a b stuff? Like, I'm calling you a b. You don't know what. You don't know what none of these is about. I paid for the first of all. As soon as it happened, just because. You hear your mama talking. Hey, you talking, talking crazy. crazy. You talking your mama, nigga. Like you a nigga. Hey, no, 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 no. Disrespect the game, nigga. I really came from this, nigga. And we don't fuck with you, nigga. You a sucker, nigga. You a straight sucker. You a disgrace. For years. No Jumper was known for being a place where you could find iconic hip hop interviews and underground sensations on the verge of turning into stars. And the channel was a respected media outlet in hip hop. But over the years, as it experienced more viral moments, its focus began to shift little by little. A roster of personalities started to grow and its cast began to produce viral moments along with drama and controversy. Then in 2022, the channel turned into a full-on reality TV show, with fights, people getting spit on, drinks being thrown, and personal lives being exposed. In 2023, the chaos hit a peak, and things got so crazy that everybody tuned in to watch things fall apart and burn. So in this video, we'll cover the rise and fall of No Jumper. No Jumper, as it's known today, first started around 2015. The creator, Adam22, was the owner of a BMX shop with a love for hip hop and a couple friends who were underground rappers. He had a YouTube channel that he initially used for BMX content and interviews of BMX writers, but he decided to start interviewing some of his rapper friends, and the interviews did so well that he started reaching out to more rappers and doing more interviews. The channel started around the beginning of the mainstream SoundCloud movement and Adam was tapped into everything going on and bringing a lot of these types of rappers onto the podcast. Adam brought his brother-in-law Josh on as a co-owner and he handled a lot of business behind the scenes alongside him. No Jumper began to grow quickly and was basically establishing itself as the home of SoundCloud rap. It was during these years that the XXX Tentacion interview happened months before he blew up and the interview would go on to become one of the most iconic ever. Through the late 10s, the channel grew more and more, continuing to focus on documenting the careers of SoundCloud rappers, but slowly attracting bigger and more established artists on to do interviews. The SoundCloud wave was starting to die out, but No Jumper was already an established platform and interviewing different types of rappers, entertainers, and more. It was also in the late 10s that the channel began experiencing its first super viral moments. The biggest initial ones were Boonk passing out and a man running on his show pointing a grip directly in Adam's face. In 2019, No Jumper took a step towards the future direction of the channel when Adam decided to introduce a live stream show. He had a friend called Housephone who had been appearing on the channel since the beginning and becoming one of the most popular faces with the fans. And in 2019, Adam decided to do a live stream podcast called The No Jumper Show with Housephone and another media personality called Cam Girl. 2019 was also the year another very important figure would join the channel. AD was a rapper who was popping around the mid-10s, but in 2019, he ended up meeting Adam and doing an interview with him. And Adam decided to bring him onto the channel to do the No Jumper news as well as host interviews. And going into the future, he would be one of the most important people on the channel. 2019 was the beginning, but 2020 officially started the show era of No Jumper. In this year, two new shows were created on the channel. Mad Lately with Gina Views, Rosecrans Vic, and Gabe, and at the end of the day, with AD and Yassi. Mad Lately would end up fizzling out and being replaced by the Monday show later on, but at the end of the day, continued on for another three years. The shows grew and became a big part of No Jumper, growing individual fan bases of their own, separate from the main content of the channel, and as time went on, they began to attract new personalities onto the channel. Early into at the end of the day, 80s homie T-Rail made his first appearance. He was a natural on camera, super entertaining, and the people liked him, so he ended up becoming a regular part of the show. 
Then Adam started including him in things like interviews and the No Jumper News, and he became a core member of the channel. The same thing happened on Mad Lately with the social media influencer called Duno's World. And as time went on, more and more faces joined the No Jumper roster. Despite the rise of live shows, interviews were still the bread and butter of No Jumper, and Adam continued getting big names onto the channel. In 2021, No Jumper added another show when House Phone got some of his friends together to do a podcast they called Disconnected. 2021 was also the year Sharp joined No Jumper. Sharp was a real life pimp, but in 2021, he did an interview with No Jumper and Adam ended up bringing him onto the crew. Sharp was entertaining from the beginning because he started every interview calm and respectfully, but at the smallest hint of disrespect, he would go off and spaz on anyone. He also made it a point to bring fake pimps onto the show to press and humiliate. As soon as he started doing interviews on No Jumper, they started going viral and he quickly became one of the biggest personalities on the channel. Between all the shows and personalities, No Jumper saw more viral moments than ever before, but this was nothing compared to what was on the way. In 2022, Adam brought two more personalities onto the channel when he introduced Flacco and Almighty Suspect. Flacco was a YouTuber from North Dakota, and he was basically a great value academics. He had a channel where he covered hip hop news, and just like academics, he was funny, but also annoying a lot of the time. Early into his career, Flacco quickly became one of the most controversial figures at No Jumper after an interview with another YouTube media figure called 16 Shot Him, where Flacco repeatedly disrespected him until he crossed the line and this happened. He was like, car chasing on Man, Kevo. shut up. I just said, let the man talk. What'd you say, Kevo? <laughs> bro, suck my bro. That's a, Hey, that's stop bro. playing before I suck. Hey, do it. Hey, no, 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 no. Almighty Suspect was an LA rapper who hit his peak in the late 10s. He was also entertaining, but also had a temper that would come out from time to time. Through 2022, the viral moments continued to stack up, with the majority coming from sharp interviews. You got real game members watching this right now, right? And so they're they really do. gonna listen to you and, and they're gonna look at your do. funny and they're gonna be like, who the f was this? Well, they gotta get the 20 you minutes of the time? interview. Why the f they gotta get to the first 20 time. minutes? Disrespect the game, nigga. I, I really came from this game, and that we don't fuck with you, nigga. You, you a sucker, nigga. You a straight sucker. You a straight sucker. You a straight booger. You a booger under the table, some motherfucker wearing some like glass and got smeared. Shut up. Now you bitches as victims? Me. I didn't say I was a victim. Now you a victim? Quay, you got him mad. You got him mad. No, baby, I'm just passionate. Then why? Listen, what I'm. You you just, just talking. Passionate. You're just I'm talking. Passionate. Now no, you're just passionate. talking. No, you didn't call that passionate. Face. I didn't you like didn't her. That's from the utmost. Like you don't utmost know who you don't know her. You don't know what none of these bitches about. What are you talking about? What is you talking about? What is you talking about? What is you What's you gonna do, Sharp? By far the most viral moment of the entire year was when Almighty Suspect beat up a fake pimp for disrespecting him. Ben Franklin knows who I am. Out of here. He knows who the. I am. I'm you said money what? Every day. I said, said Ben Franklin knows who the who fuck I am. Who you calling a bitch? Though? I'm calling you a bitch. The employees were the ones creating the viral moments, but as owners of the channel, Adam and Josh were leaning into the controversy to get views, and as a result, even extremely unprofessional situations like Sus beating up a guest were posted as soon as possible. All around the board, Adam was leaning into controversy. His interviews were getting more and more federal, and he was becoming more and more like DJ Vlad, asking every guest from the streets incriminating questions. You sound like the police, bro. <laughs> if it was back in the day, then who every cares? Every question you didn't ask me had been like a detective coming oh, to ask me, what the fuck? In 2021, he had dived into the gang world and was bringing a lot of gang members on to ask them questions mainly focused around their lives in the streets, referring to interviews he did with their ops and asking them questions about each other. Obviously, people didn't like this, and in July, Adam made what he thought would be a regular appearance on the Joe Budden show, but unbeknownst to him, it was a trap to press him about his messy interviews and what many believed to be vulture tendencies. The interview got people talking. On one hand, the argument could be made that he was simply giving people from rough upbringings a chance to share their story, 
And for a lot of the younger artists who are still new to music, the main thing they had to talk about was their life in the streets. You could say that any beefs that made their way into the music or onto the internet were fair game to ask about. But on the other hand, you could take what Adam was doing as using gang culture for views and trying to pry into a world that he had no business in. You could argue that him asking about beefs was further instigating situations that could have serious consequences for the sole purpose of getting more views and making more money. A lot of the people in Joe Budden's own comments took Adam's side, but a significant portion of the hip hop community believed that Joe was right. Things moved on and the situation became another in a long list of controversial No Jumper news. In addition to all the viral moments and beef with guests on the No Jumper podcast, the channel was also experiencing internal beefs as well. The first major one was Almighty Suspect vs. t Rell. This beef started after a video surfaced of some dudes showing Sus's chain and t Rell made a joke about it. Sus called in to say that he didn't appreciate t Rell speaking on the situation, but things got a little heated. Hello? Almighty, what up? We still on the show right now. What's happening? Hey, where that T-Rail at? I'm right here. Oh. Hey, look, like, you feel me? Like, I know this my new job and all that, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I just want to tell you, fool, like, I know you be, like, doing the little jokey jokes, and I feel that, but I feel like my AD went about it the right way, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was spamming the comments with the shit, and he called me and said something about it, but then he just hop on that, it's like, oh, he got his shit done. He got it, whatever, whatever, like, bro, like, man to man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't feeling that. That's all I'm gonna I'm say. Like, I'm gonna talk to you more, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I see you in person, but that's all I wanted to say. Like, I wasn't feeling that, and I'm gonna talk to you about it. Oh. Man, look, check this out, man. Whatever I said is a joke. You feel me? And that's how it is, and that's how it's gonna be. Like, now, ain't no gonna finna tell me they finna talk to me. Then later on AD's community stream, the situation came back up again, and so it's called in again. But this time, t Rail really went off. All I'm, I'm going to keep reiterating the same statement. And look, this is just how I feel. I wasn't tripping on, on you speaking on it. But what made me mad is, bro, the lack of the facts. Why well, don't really know what's going on? I feel like we I could... We don't know your situation, have, fool. We don't know what the f*** going on. Don't speak on it then. Nigga, don't we speak speaking on it, on it then. Then. Look, look, Nigga, you, we speaking on it so we can clear don't it. don't speak on it. Speaking if on you don't it know the situation, don't speak on it. I'm speaking on whatever is the topic, you feel and, me? And, and that's cool. You can do what you want to do. Yeah. And all I said is when I see you, we're going to talk about it. Oh, oh yeah. When you see me, <laughs> hey, look. Bro. When you see me and you talking about anything like that, yeah. if you see me and we talking about hey, anything look, like that's that, all I gotta we, we got to get when out. I, we hey, if we, are we getting down? We, go whatever. we, we can hey, take a hey, run. We can run hey, a fan whatever you want to do. Whatever you, you want to do. Whatever you want to do, exactly. nigga. Exactly. Whatever you want to do. T Rail recognized that he was out of pocket and apologized later, but both Adam and AD played into the situation more by clipping these heated exchanges and adding dramatic titles to get views off of the beef. Whether it was intentional or not, no Jumper had created an environment full of different personalities where conflict was inevitable and they made sure to capitalize on this drama even if it made the channel look like reality TV. In an environment like this, it was almost certain more beasts would follow and the next to pop off also involved Almighty Suspect. In July, the Monday show premiered on the channel and it was initially just Flacco and Gina as permanent hosts but later on, Almighty Suspect and Lush were added to the show. Things went smooth for a little bit, but as time went on, the occasional jokes about Flacco turned into the whole cast basically bullying him, and eventually Flacco got tired of it and went to Adam to get his own show. Gina and Suss didn't like this and felt that Flacco was being fake and talking about them behind their backs. Flacco eventually ended up leaving the Monday show, but this didn't stop them. Lush, Gina, and Sus continued the podcast and continued to bring Farco's name up and make fun of him. And on episode 31, they dedicated a whole episode to calling people he went to high school with and trying to expose him. It was Lush's decision to call people from Farco's past, but Adam and Josh leaned into it, promoting this internal drama again with the title and thumbnail 
and they also clipped the interview to post on the second channel. This whole situation was a tipping point for Flacco and drove him to respond. Uh, now, again, bro, I cannot tolerate that. And as a man dog, as a man, yo, win, lose, or draw lush, I need that fade outside, yo. Word. I need that fade outside, yo. This was not the end of the situation either, because a few weeks later, Sus and Flacco found themselves on the No Jumper News together, and the beef came back up again. And of course, the altercation was clipped and titled to play into the drama. Right, next topic, though. But we are co-workers, that? though, my Topic. Why do we have Man, to do this? Let's not go into that. Though, bro. You the snakiest Why co-worker though, bro? here. You're uh, the snakiest up, bro. co-worker here. Speak Let's one of do them. that. Let's okay, do speak that. One of the them, moment bro. I got into it with Kelpie, you was up here talking about he's not coming back, right? I hope no, he doesn't come back, right? That's Josh. a lie. Josh, that's a lot. Who was pro who was who was that's, pushing that's, for me to not come back? I that's did a lot. not hear that anything like that. In January of 2023, the internal drama reached an all-time high when Adam 22 did an interview with a transgender who exposed House Phone. Adam called House Phone after, and House Phone asked him not to put out the interview, but Adam decided to do it. But according to him, he told the editor to cut all the parts out with House Phone's name. But the censoring wasn't done correctly, and when the interview came out, everybody knew it was House Phone. Some people believe Adam exposed House Phone on purpose, some believe it was an accident, but basically everyone agrees that the interview should never have come out to begin with. House Phone was pissed, and he waited two weeks to confront Adam on the No Jumper show, and it didn't go well. Adam apologized, but didn't take accountability the way House Phone felt he should, and they went back and forth until this happened. And then let's let's move forward to that bullshit apology you gave when you're on the news. You're talking about yeah, he's been going through the mob. He's been going through the health. You talking about the person that raised me, that birthed me, my best friend that died. Oh, just he's been going through the mom. But you, do you are you actually acting like I have some kind of disrespect for your mom when you're I respectful as fuck. I paid for the first funeral of all, as soon as it all. happened, just because. <laughs> Afterwards, they appeared to have settled things, but there was no repair on the true damage that had been done, and House Phone, along with the rest of the members of the Disconnected show, left and did their own thing. After the House Phone situation, a lot of No Jumper fans turned against Adam, but besides this, things were basically normal. And then, two months later, another huge situation popped off. Adam wanted to take the No Jumper show in another direction, so to do this, he decided to replace AD with another co-host. After making this decision, he informed AD and things were fine, but then he talked to Lush, another co-host on the show, and said things he didn't say to AD. Lush revealed what Adam had said on Discord and it ended up getting back to AD, who was not happy to hear Adam had said things behind his back. When Adam found out what Lush had done, he was heated and made the decision to continue to play into the drama by firing him live on air, which got everybody talking. Boy, like, no, you lied to me to my face out there, right in my own office. No, dude, I didn't. You like, did. If if I did, I would have said something. Well, then there's a bunch of people in the Discord who are tragically misled, and some of them are people that I trust. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Mikey's in the Discord. Like, did I say? It feels yeah. kind of crazy that all these people would just like try to frame you, you know? It seems and, a little bit more likely that you're just talking to... Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of like, sh I'm not trying to throw nobody under the bus, but I didn't say like what you said, that, that shit. I didn't say that. Okay. I didn't, Well, like I would have told you if I did. Like, I mean, it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna take you providing the entire Discord chat and, and pointing out line by line things that you didn't say that I'm being told I mean, by multiple people the, that you did say. I can show you the entire chat. I didn't say that shit. I honestly think, at least for now, maybe we can come to the bottom of this at some point, but it's probably better than usually. All right, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not expect this uh, to be a narrative that was taking place today, but we just, we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just super disappointed. I didn't. The next day, AD and his homie Pun ended up calling Adam and pressing him on a live stream about removing AD from the No Jumper show and talking him behind his back. Adam stuck to his argument that he didn't do anything wrong 
and the only problem was Lush repeating what he said instead of keeping it confidential. AD saw this as a lack of accountability on Adam's part and decided to cut ties with No Jumper and T-Rell and Duno joined them and together they formed their own media conglomerate which they decided to call Figmunity World. They were already prepared for this move because before they left both AD and T-Rell had started streaming on their own and were seeing a lot of success and in interviews after they left Adam revealed that he regretted the fact that they were as successful as they were and he didn't receive any percentage even though they had built their following off the No Jumper platform. There are arguments both for and against these separate platforms possibly competing with No Jumper and on an interview with Adam, Joe Budden made the argument that them doing content on their own didn't really affect No Jumper, but Adam, academics, and several others have argued that it did. Adam felt a way about this for a little while, and it definitely played a role in his decision to take AD off the Tuesday show. Even if it made sense business-wise to get rid of AD and T-Rail, the way it ended up going down was not ideal. And Adam, who was fresh off all the backlash from the household situation, basically became a full-on villain after this new drama, and arguably the new most hated media figure, possibly surpassing DJ Vlad. And when the internet doesn't like somebody, it throws everything it can at them. And suddenly, Adam's past was brought up, and old allegations of him messing with the 16-year-old popped up. As of early 2023, with all the drama in the past few months, and the departure of Housephone, AD, T-Rail, and Duno, many believe that the channel is over, but this is an exaggeration. Views have definitely dropped following everybody leaving, but they still have familiar faces like Sharp, Flacco, and Sus doing live streams and interviews. And in addition to the live content, No Jumper is still a huge platform and they still have plenty of artists and other celebrities who want to come through for interviews. Adam has also made it clear that he wants to take No Jumper in a more political direction. In late 2022, he began doing more interviews with political streamers, as well as faces of the far right. And recently, he's been using the No Jumper channel to host political debates between these types of people, leading many to believe this will be the future focus of the channel. But no one really knows what Adam will do. The decisions he has chosen to make in regards to dealing with his employees and the reemergence of the details involving his situation with the 16-year-old basically guarantees that if he remains in hip-hop, he'll remain one of the most hated figures in media. His fascination with diving into street politics, beef, and other messy topics, and his use of internal beef between employees for views are good arguments for him being a vulture, but at the same time, he's given plenty of people of color an opportunity to build a fan base of their own and expand to create their own platforms, even if he didn't anticipate them getting as big as they did, so it's unfair to say he took and didn't give anything in return. Regardless of where the channel goes, No Jumper has definitely produced iconic moments and been an important part of documenting hip hop history.